the iPhone 8. When it comes to the iPhone 8, we already know quite a lot of stuff. So we know we have a general idea of how the iPhone 8 is going to look like. Then we also know the main features that the iPhone 8 is going to come with. So the Apple 11 processor, three gigabytes of RAM, that OLED display and a huge focus, a strong focus on uh, 3D functionality. So 3D depth mapping and AR as well. Not even to mention wireless charging, those really thin bezels and also the fingerprint sensor Touch ID built into the display assembly or another option is having it in uh, into the power button. So, so far the iPhone 8 seems amazing. Definitely the biggest change since the original iPhone back in 2007, which makes a lot of sense because the iPhone is turning, well, it already turned 10 years in 2017. So this is the 10th anniversary edition iPhone. Reason why it might also be called not the iPhone 8, but the iPhone edition, by the way. However, there is one single thing that might be a pretty big issue with the iPhone 8. And in case you're wondering, no, I'm not talking about the possibility of having the fingerprint reader on the back of the iPhone, or I'm not even talking about that high price point. So yeah, welcome to Zenoff Tech, I'm Daniel, and welcome to my Leaks and Rumors series on the iPhone 8. And in this episode, I wanna talk about what might just be the biggest issue on the iPhone 8. So yeah, as always, grab some popcorn and enjoy. So when it comes to the design of the iPhone 8, at the moment, we basically have two different design options. So one of them is this one. So this one is the one that you've seen in those clones, alleged clone leaks. So the fingerprint reader being on the back and we still have some bezels, but they're really, really small, significantly smaller than what we have on the iPhone 7, the iPhone 6S and the iPhone 6. Now the second design option, this is the one that's most likely going to happen. So on this one, we have pretty much no bezels on the front. The fingerprint reader is either built into the display assembly or onto the power button. Now I would put my money on the second option. It feels more Apple-like. The design is much cleaner. And if you were to choose which one do you think is more Apple-like, I'm guessing most of you will probably pick the second one. So when it comes to the second option, we've seen quite a few schematic leaks. We've seen part leaks, especially a new one, which focuses on the display assembly. So yeah, display assembly leak, then case leaks, uh, which you're probably familiar with, and all those renderings that Benjamin Gaskin has made on this iPhone 8's design. So you're all probably familiar with this design of the iPhone 8. Okay, so it looks really good, but what's what's the issue with the iPhone 8? Well, it's probably something that you've already noticed. I'm obviously talking about that sensor bar on the top of the iPhone. So since Apple is removing all bezels, the iPhone 8 is going to be significantly smaller than the iPhone 7 Plus. So as you can see, it's going to be almost the same size as a 4.7 inches iPhone 7, however, with a 5.8 inches display. So 5.8 versus 5.5 that we have on the iPhone 7 Plus, a very noticeable difference in both screen size and also the form factor. Now to achieve this really thin form factor, Apple basically had to remove a couple of components. So the first one is the home button. This is the most obvious one. The home button is not going to be physical anymore, but wait, the iPhone 7 didn't have a physical button, a home button anymore. So honestly, removing the home button on the iPhone 8 is not going to be any issue at all because the iPhone 7 uses a haptic engine that vibrates and it gives you the impression, the feeling that you've, actu that you've actually pressed the home button, even though the home button isn't isn't physical. It's not, it's not there. It's basically underneath the glass panel. Now, speaking of Touch ID, we still don't know where this thing is going to be located. So obviously one of the options would be having it uh, embedded into the display assembly on which Apple actually has quite a few patents on. However, this this also depends on the number of units Apple will be able to produce. So if they have issues when it comes to manufacturing enough display uh, panels with Touch ID embedded, then they will choose the second option, which is having it embedded into the power button. So this is something that we've seen on phones such as the Sony Xperia XZ or the Sony Xperia Z5 Premium, a fingerprint reader built into the power button. And on those phones, it actually worked pretty well. And we've actually seen a larger power button in some of the schematics of the iPhone 8 and some of the less schematics, and especially on this dummy unit. So as you can see, the power button is not just significantly longer than the one on the iPhone 7 or the previous generation iPhones. It's not just longer, but also thicker than the previous ones. So a larger power button would most obviously integrate Touch ID. So that sounds really promising, removing the home button and the Touch ID. However, besides those two components, there are a couple of more components which are a bit more difficult to remove. So I'm obviously talking about the earpiece, the proximity sensor, the ambilight sensor, and obviously uh, the front facing camera. So these are very difficult to relocate or embed onto the display. The reason why Apple might have this sensor bar instead of a full display on the front. Now, the interesting thing here, and I'm not exactly sure how many of you notice, uh, but 
Apple already uses an ambilight sensor and a proximity sensor embedded into the display on a device. And that's the Apple Watch. So the Apple Watch already uses something that the iPhone 8 could take advantage of, even though uh, that sensor bar is still there. I'm really not sure why Apple won't do the same thing for the iPhone when it comes to the proximity sensor or the ambilight sensor. But the reason why that sensor bar has to be there is because of the speaker grill and the front facing camera. So those would be the biggest issues. So the earpiece could essentially be positioned on the top and then the sound directed to the front. So that's, that's definitely possible. Or another option would be to have a small vibration motor so that the sound is actually uh, sent through your skull. This sounds a bit weird, but a couple of devices already use this. Sending sound to vibration that would be picked up by your skull. So this is already in use. So this is another option for that uh, earpiece. The only, the only problem here is that front facing camera. So the display would honestly need to have the ability to make the pixels see through, so transparent. Now this deck already exists, by the way, in some home glass windows. So these are actually some prototypes and even if they do come out, they will be really, really expensive. And from what I can tell, these windows can only show uh, a transparent picture. So they cannot show a full display. That's what I'm saying. They will always be transparent. So Apple definitely needs to create something new, a new kind of display, something innovative that would allow the front facing camera to see through the actual display. And the good news is that they actually have a patent on this. So here's a new patent from Apple and this shows how tiny holes can be embedded into an OLED display. So this would essentially allow you to have a section of the display perfectly clear. This would allow cameras and sensors to be placed behind a display. And this is something that Apple definitely wants to do, but unfortunately it's not going to happen with the iPhone 8. Maybe not even with the next year's iPhone, maybe just in three to four years, maybe not even then. So this is just a single patent. Usually it takes years for Apple to apply a patent in uh, production after they apply for the actual patent. So this would honestly be the dream, a full front display on a phone with absolutely no bezels at all. So you can probably tell that the main issue with the iPhone 8 is going to be that top sensor bar. So why is that going to be an issue? Well, it's going to be an issue because it's going to block the top part, the top section of the display. So there are basically two ways that iOS 11 could be implemented uh, on the iPhone 8. So the first one is to simply have the content go around the bar. Now this will look awesome when it comes to a design perspective, so you will also get a slightly larger display. However, when you're scrolling through a web page, the middle section would be cut out, so you would still have to scroll to view the entire page. And same goes when you're viewing a widescreen video, you're either going to lose that section or you're going to have some black bars anyway. So option one, really cool looking, but definitely not practical at all. Now option number two, the iPhone 8 comes with an OLED display. Now having an OLED display means that the pixels provide both the color and uh, the brightness, so you don't actually need any backlight. So this also means that you can turn off individual pixels when you wish, and you can have that really awesome, that perfect black levels uh, just as if the display was actually turned off. So the second option would be to fill that display space on the top with black bars. And that black bar on the display, on the OLED display, would simply match the sensor bar since they would both be black. And you would simply have the time, the battery, and all the indicators in the right and on the left sections of the display. However, they would need to be fairly small since you won't have the middle section to play with since that's going to be taken by uh, by the body of the phone. Now Benjamin Gaskin did a few renders of how this might look like and he imagines the time actually being uh, in the middle under the sensor bar, which I also think is going to be the case. I mean, from a design perspective, this is the option that is going to look the best. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. So this I would say is the biggest issue, even though it's not a really big issue of the iPhone 8. Let me know in the comments what do you guys think about that black bar, which which design option, which design style when it comes to the iOS 11 implementation on the iPhone 8 do you think is better? Being able to use those left and right sections of the display and on the middle part or having uh, having the signal, the battery life and all those uh, indicators on the top. I mean, from a design perspective, I do see Apple going with the second option uh, for a more consistent look. But yeah, even even the first one would look amazing. Now, speaking of this design style, there have been some leaked display panels recently. So those include the display panel, uh, the screen protector, and we've also had some schematics and lots of renderings all showing this new sensor bar style design. So I would say that this is most likely happening on the iPhone 8. Now, of course, that the second design option for the iPhone 8 uh, would be to have that clone design that we've seen so many times before. So an iPhone 8 with some pretty large bezels, still significantly smaller 
than uh, the iPhone 7 or the iPhone 6s or the iPhone 6. A fingerprint reader on the back, and even though this one looks pretty bad uh, from a design perspective, I mean, even this one is far more functional, at least when it comes to the bezels, than the previous generation iPhones. So I think that even this one is not really that bad. So what do you guys think about all this? Which design option for the iPhone 8 iOS 11 design style implementation would you guys pick? Which one do you think is better uh, functionality wise and which one do you think is better design wise? And also, how do you feel about that sensor bar in general? Do you think uh, do you think it's it's obviously the best way Apple could have made a full front facing display? So the other option would have been to make something similar to the Samsung Galaxy S8. So smaller bezels, but divided between the top and the bottom. So that would have been another option when it comes to the iPhone 8's design. But I do see Apple's design a bit more uh, futuristic, so to say, than even the Samsung Galaxy S8. What do you guys think? But yeah, other than that, feel free to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one, more leaks and rumors episodes on the iPhone 8 and many more cool upcoming devices. Also don't forget to enable notifications on my channel by simply tapping on that bell icon so that you're notified as soon as I upload a brand new epic video. If you have enjoyed this video feel free to give it a like to let me know and also let me know in the comments if you're epic enough to make it until the end of this video by saying I was epic enough to make it until the end. But yeah this was pretty much it for now so thank you for watching until the end I'm Daniel and I'll see you guys in my next one. Then of heck signing out. Cheers.